It's that time of the year again where Evan and Caitlin try to permanently incarcerate a pumpkin and resin against its will, and I just want to make a pumpkin a little bit smarter. So that's what we're doing on today's episode of Mellow Labs. This episode was brought to you by JLC PCB, your one-stop shop for your electrical and mechanical project needs. JLC PCB offers everything from PCB prototyping to component sourcing and a wide range of mechanical services like CNC milling and 3D printing. Their website makes it super easy to order. Just upload your Gerber files or your 3D files, select your specifications and click order. With prices starting from just $2 for 1 to 8 layer PCBs, it's an affordable way to bring your projects to life. If you want to DIY your PCBs, JLC PCB is the best choice. Even multi-layer PCBs are incredibly affordable. Six layer PCBs starting from just $35. And now you can get a $30 coupon on their website for six layer PCBs. That means you can experience high quality multi-layer PCBs starting from just $5. Follow the link in my description. So here's my concept for the pumpkin. I want it to have some kind of like motion person detection so that when somebody gets close to it, it starts having different effects. So like if I have a light that's just like green when nobody's near it, and then the closer you get to it, the redder the light gets. And then if you get to a certain point, it starts making sounds. And then when you get even closer, like fog starts coming out of it and it starts sounding like really annoyed because of your presence, because that's how I feel when people come to my door. Unless it's the mailman, then it's fine. Um, so that's the plan. Let's go shopping for parts. I'm gonna start shopping for parts on DF Robot. They're not a sponsor, they just like to send me free stuff. First thing I need is a millimeter wave sensor. Uh, they have this one, which is the C4001, which I've used in these videos before, but they did just release this new one, the C1001. It's a bit more expensive, but I think it adds a whole lot more functionality than the other one, like fall detection, sleep monitoring, breathing, and heart rate. Really cool stuff. So I'll take one of those. And then I also need, wow, that's quite a lot of LEDs. Um, ah, there they are, RGB addressable LEDs. Yeah, that looks like what I need. I'm just gonna add it to the basket. To power the whole thing, I wanna use 18650s and I recently found out that DF Robot do these uh, 18650 holders with like built-in charging and 3.3 volts and five volts output as well as USB and like on and off. It basically does everything you need for a battery pack. So uh, I'm just gonna grab one of these. Oh, they're on back order. Hmm. Let's hope we get one. Now we need a way to play audio and if you've watched my last video, you probably already know that I'm gonna go for the voice prompter module because it basically does everything I need in that it plays audio and it plays it really loud. So uh, I'm gonna grab one of these and if you wanna learn more about it, check out my last video. Okay, so that's detection lights, batteries, sound. Oh, ESP. I'm gonna go with an ESP32C6 Beetle just because it's a reliable choice. I've used it before, I know it works. So uh, let's just get one of those. Now, do they have a solution for fog? Hmm, okay. So I'm gonna order this stuff from DF Robot and I'm gonna look into fog machines. Okay, so after browsing around for a bit, I've realized two things. Fog machines are pretty big and more expensive than I'm willing to spend. So instead, I'm gonna go in a different direction. I'm gonna use an ultrasonic humidifier module. It won't look the same, but I think it'll look close enough. So I'm gonna order those and... And as if by magic, a box from DF Robot arrives on the same day I'm recording again. And hey look, it's all the parts I ordered a moment ago. That is tiny. Wait, hold on. This is the old millimeter wave sensor that I used for my projects. This is the new one. Look at how much smaller it is. And it does so much more. Spool of LEDs. The MP3 player module. This is the ESP32 Beetle. This is the 18650 holder. They've also sent me an offline voice recognition module, which I don't remember asking for. Uh, I have two of these already. So if you'd like it, leave me a comment below. And these right here are the ultrasonic humidifier modules, which my next video is all about these. So if you'd like to know more, get subscribed. Or if you'd like to watch it now, it's available on Patreon. Now that I have all of the parts, I can start putting everything together. 
Okay, so I've been working on this for like two days now, and I've got the speaker to work just fine, I've got the lights to work just fine, but for whatever reason, this millimeter wave sensor just does not want to tell me what I want it to tell me. I've got like the default script loaded up, and the only thing I'm getting from it is that a person is there, and that I am an active person, and my body movement parameters are anywhere from like two to 90. I still have no idea what that means, but my respiratory rate and my heart rate just non-existent, and I've tried getting it to tell me like how far away from the sensor I am, but it just does not want to. I played around with using different microcontrollers, I've played around with using different code, and that's how I figured out that the code that's on the uh, wiki site for this little guy on the DF Robot website has a typo in it. It should be an E, and there's an I. It's very annoying, DF Robot. Fix your crap, it's getting annoying. I've really wanted to use this millimeter wave sensor just because, you know, it's a cool sensor and it can do a lot and it can work through like plastic and through pumpkin and whatever. But in, I'm gonna have to pivot, I'm gonna have to use something else because this guy just does not want to do what I want it to do. It's very annoying. Um, right. Another thing I need to figure out is how to uh, play around with these guys because these guys have buttons for them to uh, turn on and off. Uh, I've not actually decided how I'm going to interface with this button yet. Um, best case scenario, I'm just going to hook up a GPI open to it, just send it a pulse and hopefully that works. Uh, worst case scenario, I attach a servo that presses the button. Um, so that's where I'm at mentally and physically. I'm going to go back to work and hopefully my next update, I'm happier. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours, I'm very tired, it's very late, but I have something I'm very happy with. So, uh, quick recap, uh, I tried using this, don't spoil the surprise yet, uh, I tried using this, which is a uh, time of flight distance sensor, which works great, it's very accurate, it's, it's a very short detection uh, radius, span, whatever you want to call it. So it works great, doesn't want to, that, that won't work for this because I need like meters. Uh, I tried using this, which is the ultrasonic distance sensor from DF Robot, this one is specifically the analog variant uh, it just does not work the way it should uh, it was, uh, I for whatever reason when I set it here it thinks like 30 centimeters is like 17 and it doesn't really want to detect beyond that for some reason and then when I get in closer it just gets very confusing readings so um, yeah it's another loss for DF robot oof. Uh, so what I ended up with is a bog standard um, ultrasonic distance sensor, like the cheapest ones you can get, and that works perfectly. Like I've set it to turn on the lights from green to red, and uh, it, the closer I get to it, the redder the light gets. Apart from that, but I'll, I'll fix that, that blinking bug. It'll, it'll be fixed by the time I release this. Uh, so that works great, and when I get beyond um, five centimeters, it actually turns on those, which is the control board for the ultrasonic humidity uh, thingy modules. And the way this works is uh, I had to reverse engineer it. Uh, I plugged the multimeter to it and measured the voltages. Uh, but the button pulls the uh, a certain pin on this little uh, IC down, which tells it to turn on or off. So what I'm doing is I'm just um, momentarily pulling the pin high and then low, because if I leave it high, it will just um, burn itself out. Don't ask me how I know. I've not burnt it, but I definitely got very hot. Um, so yeah, it momentarily pulls it up, pulls it down, which tells the uh, module to turn on, and then I do the same to tell it to turn off. And that actually works really well. I've not configured the sound yet. I'll do that tomorrow. I'm very tired. It is uh, a little past 10 now. But for now, this works beautifully. Um, so now what I have to do is I have to make a K, well first of all I have to solder everything together to like actually hold its shape, but then I have to make a case that will be both um, waterproof so that I can put it inside the pumpkin, uh, but then also I need these things to be in water so that they can actually produce um, mist. So I need some of this to be waterproof and some of it not to be waterproof, but also I need holes cut out to have the ultrasonic distance sensor come out of it so it can actually sense people. This will, this is where the uh, the engineering part is gonna come into this video because I need to make a waterproof container with holes in it and also it needs to hold water. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. Right, I'm gonna go get some sleep and uh, do this tomorrow morning. 
in all honesty, it's been a couple days. Uh, I got the flu and I continued working. But I figured you didn't want to see me sneezing and everything else whilst I'm trying to solder bits together. So let's just skip to the good part. The electronics are all working and functioning. Uh, I have some code on here that does roughly what I need it to do. There's still a couple of uh, annoying bugs that I need to GPT out. But uh, we'll get to that later. What I actually want to talk about now is this case that I've designed and printed for it. And as always, it's very much function over form. I'm very bad at designing good looking things. So that's the whole thing. I have a lid up here. That's where the electronics are going to be housed. And then underneath that, I these are holes to put the uh, humidifier thingies through. And hopefully this will hold water. I haven't actually tested that yet. So um, let's test that. Right, I don't need it to hold a lot of water. For now, I'll just be satisfied with it holding water. So, um, and obviously my desk is plywood, so it'll be nice and easy to see when it does eventually leak. I was actually not expecting that to work. I was planning to like fill it in with like epoxy or something, but uh, I guess there's no need. Sweet. All right, well, let's start assembling. It should more or less be as easy as just dropping things in. Uh, these don't really glue in here. I did consider gluing them in here, but I don't think I need to. They kind of click into place relatively well. We're gonna have to cable manage these cables, but we'll get to that. So now that should go on there. And uh, I've got a hole on the side here where all of the wires are gonna go into. I hopefully made it big enough for all of the wires to go into. The lights are going on the inside of the top of the lid so I can seal it and it will hopefully illuminate the whole thing nicely and evenly. I need double sided tape. The battery pack goes in here like this so that I can access the on and off button. Uh, speaker, I have a nice little uh, cutout hole for it here to hopefully keep humidity away probably won't work but you know worth a try i do very much like this 18650 holder it's got rails on the side for uh, 5 volts and 3.3 volts so i've got the microcontroller connected to 3.3 volts and everything else in here is 5 volts and it's actually been working pretty well like you've got uh, on when you press it once and then off when you press it twice and other stuff. Uh, one note, do make sure that you've pre-charged your um, 18650s and make sure they are balanced. Uh, I've uh, plugged in two unbalanced cells and one of them went up to like five point something volts and it got spicy and I had to put it in the timeout corner. But um, it seems okay. Uh, I've balanced these before putting them in here. It does also let you charge it, but I'm not gonna have the uh, charging ports accessible from the outside. I tried my best at uh, spacing everything out here, but uh, it's still gonna be a little bit tight. Oh, I forgot to mention, so this um, ultrasonic uh, humidifier board supports six. I've only got four in here, and uh, to prevent me burning these coils out, because when you don't have a, uh, a, a when you don't have the piezo thing connected to the board, it likes to uh, heat up those coils here uh, a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there because uh, I realize I'm actually spreading misinformation. So it's not the coils that get hot; it's these uh, these MOSFETs. As you can see, these are the two that I've tombstoned so that they don't get any power. The LED still comes on, but it, these don't consume any power. And I've got it under the thermal camera here. And what I've got is, so these two are disconnected, which is annoyingly these two on this side. And then I've got this one connected. This one is disconnected from the humidifier modules. And then these two are connected again. So when I turn this on, you'll see the temperatures. And as you can see, the three that are connected completely uh, within safe, temperatures-ish. These two are consuming absolutely nothing. And then this guy, this guy starts getting a bit hot. So I don't really know how high up it's gonna go, but I don't really wanna chance it. So I'm gonna uh, turn that off now. But yeah, it's not, the MOS, it's, it's not the coils, it's the MOSFETs. Make sure that they're plugged in, or if you're not using them, tombstone them like I did here. And that's the end of my PSA, goodbye. Right, I think I can somewhat put this lid back that 
Um, okay. I just almost wants to close. Maybe a rubber band later. But then we can put that on top there, like so. And uh, we should be good to like put this in a pumpkin. So, no, well, actually, let me do some cable management first, but then we'll put it in a pumpkin. Oh. Part of go away, did you not understand? Back off. But not, why, no, why are you the only one? Around. Around. Walk away now. Oh, I assume the other ones haven't filled up Got with water yet. Seriously, how close do you need to? Part of go. Got some nerve. I'm not here for your entertainment. Well, that's not, the, the thing's See, not supposed to be on yet. Remember when I said the code has bugs? The code still has a couple bugs. But when you get close, it turns on the foggy thingies. They're not... They haven't... Ha okay. Okay, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I clearly still have some issues to work out, so whilst I'm doing that, uh, you get to watch highlights of the last live stream where we carved pumpkins. And here is my DF Robot Pumpkin. Uh, it is already getting moldy. Let's just do this quickly because, ew, it's gross. I don't fully know where to put the um, distance sensor, so I'm just gonna put it there for now. Uh, I need to add more water to the thing. Now we can close it up and now we can cue the fog. Let's put the lights on. Pretty decent. Wait, let me turn this light off. That did nothing. Okay, let's close the blinds. Still not quite what I wanted. Turn those off for a minute. What if I flip it? the other way so that the fog kind of has to come from the back maybe that will make it look interesting uh put the lid back on how's that does that distribute the fog out evenly now kind of slowly coming out of it this is kind of what i was expecting it doesn't look as nice from the front but if i close that Give it a minute and then open it up. That's pretty cool. It's not exactly what I wanted. Oh crap, the water leaked out of it. Now it's swimming in a puddle of water. And we can trigger sounds, right? Oh, not you. Turn around and walk away now. Part of go away, did you not understand? Back off. Seriously, how close do you need to get before you get the hint? That's it. You've crossed the line. Well, it's not exactly what I envisioned 100%, but it does still look pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother programming the, the, the whole distance thing, just because um, A, this pumpkin is already falling apart, and B, uh, it's currently sitting in a pool of water. Um, so probably not going to use that one. I don't know where else to go from here, so uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have some spare change, please support me over on Patreon. Check out the links in the descriptions for all the things, especially the, uh, the sponsor of this video. And I'll see you on next week's live stream. Goodbye. As I hide behind my creation. Oh, I'm still recording. <laughs>